What's up guys, Barry Game here, back with some more Idle Heroes, and today we're back on the main account. We're going to be jumping in and taking a look at some more PvE action. Of course, you guys saw our damage against the Faith Blade the other day with our, uh, whatchamacallit, Lord of Fear Aspen. But again, remember, he's very low power level. He's only at 4 million attack, things like that. What we're going to do in a direct comparison is we're going to chuck in our big hero Vulcan into this lineup and see what happens. Now we're running absolutely insane amounts of skill damage already. We have tons of precision, almost hitting the 150 cap for conversion to attack. We have a decent crit rate and crit damage, and that's mainly because, uh, well, we're gonna have an absolute lot of crit chance and crit damage. Um, we should be pretty much near cap on both of those. We have a little bit of armor break, and that's not going to be as big of a deal, mainly because we are going in with the Drake in this lineup. Uh, and we're going to run the Cruise, too, because the Cruise might be able to feed some bonus energy to us, all that fun stuff. And we're going to stick with the Snake, because, of course, what we really, really, really love is this part right here. Granting three layers of Noble uh, of the uh, Evolution Factor grants 33% to all allies, which is giving them a ton of extra damage to poison enemies, which means we're going to use the Snake. Now, the core we're going to use is Freya's for that additional attack, hopefully landing on the Vulcan. Vulcan's core doesn't really do much for himself. He does stuff for the team. Uh, and if you don't have a big secondary damage dealer, it's not going to work out great. So we have two attacks left. Let's see how this actually performs in comparison. Uh, I think yesterday our best attack, like our absolute best one with our Doom Terminator Vulcan was like 2.3 E14, which I think is like a translation of what, 231 trillion? Pretty sure that's what it is. Uh, so we'll have to see how this works out. The downside here is because we're using all these actives, uh, we're only getting a certain number of hits on the enemy because as you guys know basic attacks give him other things granted the enemies are proccing those uh we'll have to see what layer we get our analysis on which basically gives the drake effect to my next active against all the enemies and we'll try to watch to see when that happens it should be around seven or eight because i get analysis layer every single turn i believe can't remember what the icon looks like, especially when we already have so many things around him. I'm going to try to keep an eye out for it so you guys can see it. But his damage numbers are pretty insane already. And as the turns go on, that antlers cane is just going to increase our damage more and more and more. Is it this round? I can't tell. Really hard to tell. Yeah, I don't think I'm going to be able to tell with everything going around. Uh, it's just so, so hard to see everything. I should probably throw him in the front row just to make it easier to actually see what he's doing. Especially with the uh, the Faith Blades. They don't really... They, they target the lowest HP and then their active does like random. So, it's actually getting really glitchy here. And I swear, it's not the PC right now either. Because the PC is running good. Very good. So it's got to be blue stacks that's lagging up with this attack animation and everything. All right, let's take a look. Slow mo, all this damage is going to go. That's a lot of hits for like 2 billion plus right there. We got one more active from the snake. Hopefully, it lands on our Doom Terminator Vulcan here. Yeah, and that's the only downside is that Drake's tar is only on one target, but it does work out for some of the attacks from our Doom Terminator Vulcan as well. Let's see. Do we see an E15? We do not, but it is more than double. Well, actually, it's, it's right about double right here. So that's 4.3. Uh, if you remember, like I said, we did 2.3, I think, with the... Aspen and the only downside of this like I was saying only getting actives off is because uh, This one here whenever an ally releases or takes damage from a basic there's a 50% chance to get one layer of concentrated ray We're not gonna get a lot of those honestly uh, Because concentrated ray is the one that does uh, damage 
to two enemies two to four times so that's the one that hits a lot of different times and that would be awesome if we had that but again we're only going to get a chance to get those when the enemy is doing basic attacks we're mainly doing magic explosion when an ally or enemy releases active skills there's a 50 percent chance to get one layer we're capping that one very very easily and that's the one that is doing each layer it deals 500 percent damage to two enemies with the lowest hp that's good because at least that is always hitting the drake target and crit is guaranteed um actually no i wonder if we even need to be running crit Meanwhile, deals damage equal to 10% of targets lost HP. Huh. That's intriguing. You know what? Hold on. I wonder if we should just not be running, like, any crit chance at all. What could we run instead? Holy damage? Precision armor break. Maybe holy damage is good? Because again, our, our crit chance should be through the roof here. And on top of that, we have most of our attack already guaranteed to crit. We could try that on the second attempt here. Um, maybe, let me just check one more thing. Okay, yeah, I had all the right enables. Let's do one more attack because we only have one more for the day. And let's see if that changes anything as far as the damage numbers go. If it is a little laggy, we'll just speed up and we'll skip through the combat here. But uh, really the big, like the GG part is if the Cruz manages to use an active and feed the energy to Doom Terminator Vulcan, that would be absolutely awesome because that's additional skill damage on the active skills. Um, let's try to watch his attacks here. His counterattack's like 3 billion. Did I see that correctly? Hold on. Someone hit the queen, please. Nope, no one's going to hit the queen. Okay, it's fine. The Freya shields are plenty strong enough to keep the support alive. You don't need a Vesa nowadays. Okay, okay, let's watch this. I want to see what the damage looks like here. 58. 2.5 billion counterattack. So yeah, I guess there is a decent amount of RNG that's going to go in, into this too of what the queen is doing. If the queen's getting hit. If there's a way to get the queen as our lowest HP target, that would be cool. It is getting a little choppy. Let's just skip. Let's see what the final damage number is here. That was significantly better. Now, to be fair, that could be due to the snake applying more uh, buffs to him this time. But I do feel like running this without crit is kind of the way to go. Because like I said, his, his active skill is mainly the magic explosion and is guaranteed to crit so you don't really need to run that much because that is going to be the biggest part of his damage right here like the biggest part you can have four layers of it every single round seems pretty strong so let me know what you guys think we'll continue trying different setups with him see if we get even higher maybe trying olivia next time we'll see if that does a little bit better with fairy guard pings on top of everything else and i'll see you guys next time